So, hi, welcome to the August edition of the Graphana Mimir community call, where we share uh, news updates from about Mimir and are open to questions as well. Um, we are just a few right now, but uh, usually people join a bit later. So, I guess let's get started. Uh, and don't, we have a sh uh, pretty short agenda for this time, because last time we went through a lot of the features upcoming in 2.10 release. But now the 2.10 release is up on us, and I will go in, I'm going to ask Oleg to give an update on the uh, status of the release, because he's been the release shepherd, or he is. I am. Yep, so I drafted the release, the third release candidate, zero, yesterday. And shortly after, I started preparing the release candidate one, because I realized some features shouldn't be experimental anymore, so I am going to promote them to stable in the first release candidate. Also, I heard that Demeter has a bug fix for something in Store Gateway. So that would be included in the RC1, and we are going to add one more config flag for one of our clients. We are going to test this in production next week, and if everything goes fine, then in September 10th, which is next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, the Monday after, we will publish the final release. You have the draft release notes, which were approved by someone, but I'm waiting for our product manager to review them before I match them. Everything's going fine so far, so far. And also quick reminder that we have switched to quarterly release cycle because we are now, we've, we've seen recently that we are shipping bigger features and mostly bug fixes. So it didn't make sense to do one release every, what it was, six weeks just for one feature. So we just, switch to quarterly releases. And yeah, that's all from my side. All right, thank you. Um, and uh, I have a couple of updates on, on ongoing things regarding the Helm chart, the Mimir Helm chart. Uh, and actually the first thing is related to the release. Um, we will create a release candidate from the Helm chart uh, once we have a release candidate from the enterprise version of the product as well, because uh, we keep those in sync. Um, so that will come a bit later, I guess next week. Yeah, that would be my guess, because uh, we had some issues with uh, AWS and um, multi uh, architecture images, Docker images. There was some incompatibility that we had to solve in, in CI so that we can actually push those images. So anyway, um, so about ongoing work in, in the Helm chart and in, in Mimir uh, as well. Last time I talked about uh, the out of order support for native histograms uh, that we started to work on. Uh, and that has gone through a couple of uh, uh, iterations uh, regarding people who work on it already, uh, but we have now uh, a team working on it. And uh, the status is that um, the basic functionality already uh, is there in Prometheus. There's a pull request in Prometheus that, that has this. Um, but uh, um, the histograms, native histograms have this feature called automated uh, counter reset uh, handling which is a way to uh, optimize uh, the detection of counter resets in histograms. This, because it's not, it is uh, costly to do the counter reset detection in histograms and also uh, very non-trivial, like how you handle this information. So anyway, the out of order stuff is going on. Um, the other thing we talked about was the, um, uh, auto scaling to introduce some experimental auto scaling into the ham chart, and uh, that uh, didn't uh, progress too much because of vacations. Like either the contributor was on vacation or we were on vacation to review, so it really slowed down. 
uh, the last information is that the contributor is going to uh, take a look at a bunch of comments that we added to the PR. So hopefully, hopefully we will progress with that. And the last one, uh, oh, which I put in the middle, sorry. Uh, so the last one regarding the ham chart is that currently the Mimir distributed ham chart has uh, is including the Grafana agent operator ham chart. And that operator ham chart uh, isn't going to be supported. Uh, it's uh, getting deprecated. And uh, the also, we are not a huge uh, fans of, of uh, operators, even though we do have our own operator. Uh, also, because the operator used the uh, uh, custom resource definitions, uh, CRDs, and uh, we always got uh, questions and, and problems out of it in, in the community Slack and uh, elsewhere, uh, because uh, Helm is really bad at handling uh, custom resource definitions, so you have to do some manual tasks to, to get this to work, even in, in the getting started uh, guide that we have. You have to do a manual step to load them, uh, which is really, uh, well, not, not very nice. So now the new direction will be that we are going to switch from the uh, Grafana agent operator to the Grafana agent ham chart proper, uh, which is going to be the supported ham chart for Grafon agent uh, going forward. And this also includes something called the agent flow, which is a different way of configuring the Grafon agent. Um, so we are going to use this uh, better supported chart in turn, uh, as a sub chart. And also a, a very nice feature of the new flow setup is that it doesn't need CRDs. You can just annotate your services or pods in Kubernetes. Uh, to get them discovered by the Grafana agent and get scraped for metrics and logs. So we will, so hopefully we can, uh, in, in about a quarter's time, I would estimate, do away with uh, this manual thing and just, uh, you know, make it mar much simpler to use this. All right. Um, any questions? Comments, you know, any uh... questions specifically related to the agenda or just general questions now? Um, agenda or general, um, either is, is okay. Yeah. Uh, I just like to comment that I'm really looking forward to the out of order support for native histograms. All of this native histogram stuff is it's awesome. Oh, well. Cool. I, I mean, you should know that it's still an experimental feature in Prometheus. In fact, I just opened the PR on a, a small bug that I found. So, but so use with like some caution. But uh, um, I think the basic functionality is is pretty good. Um, uh, may I ask, uh, like, how you are using it? Is it replacing some old metrics or through hotel or like what? What's your use case basically? Uh, so we we have basically uh, a, a homegrown like log linear based histogram functionality that we use, um, but currently we extract all of the like quantiles, like the targeted quantiles, and just store those. Um, which means like after the fact aggregation is, you know, obviously it doesn't work. Um, and we're not we're using graphite still, so we're not even on Prometheus. We're currently evaluating the mirror, um, but we're pretty pretty far along in that evaluation. But the idea of storing the histograms that we've been generating for years has like always been there and like people, you know, being at wanting to sum across multiple hosts or like whatever, and then, and then get the targeted quantiles. It's just like, you know, the, the underlying histogram implementation always supported that, but we had to like require them to do this aggregation before we, we extract the quantiles um, just because graphite, you know, obviously didn't support storing the histograms. So, uh, we're really looking forward to as we move to to Mimir being able to, you know, sort of make our histograms work with with the native histograms. Cool. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, that's actually I'm surprised that every time I hear about native histogram usage, it's, it's a different use case. I thought I would be seeing some <laughs> repetition by now, but every time it's something new, it just shows that how versatile it is. Cool. 
Um, yeah, the, the actually, uh, now that you mention it, I, I should say that uh, uh, my personal like OKR, my goal for this next release is to add uh, documentation around native histograms uh, because uh, we know that like there might be some hidden things in the implementation, but actually our biggest problem is not the implementation. It's more that the Prometheus documentation itself um, has information on native histograms, but, but it's all over the place. And there's no one place that you can go in and, and see like, how do I get started? Like what's the things I need to be aware of and, and stuff like that. So um, after some discussion with Prometheus maintainers, uh, we decided that we put this information on the grafana.com in a, the Mimir document, uh, in the cloud metrics documentation. And then uh, we, Mimir and Prometheus can copy copy it and, uh, you know, reuse it as, as they want. Um, but uh, it's going to be uh, there. Um, like I said, end of this quarter at the latest. Cool. Anything else? I had a question that's completely unrelated to, I would say, like ongoing work. It's just a generic question that I, I threw into the Slack chat, but I never got a response. Um, I think it's a quick one. Uh, I just noticed that the uh, the compactor ranges are two hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. Um, what would the downsides be of trying to skip, say, the middle compaction and doing like a four hour, 24 hour? Uh, uh, range. Uh, which would you skip? Because the two hours is uh, coming from ingesters. Is fine. Yeah, problem. and that was that was the follow up question. Does the base compaction time range need to match the ingester range? Right. Or would it take like if I said four hours was the base, would it take two two hour blocks and and make the four hour in one go? I would say that if you make it four hours, it should take the two hours blocks and make four hours in one go. I I actually wonder, I was going to check, like we are compacting two hours into one two hours block, because that might not make sense, right? Because like your question makes sense. We may, we can't compact all the two hour, two hour block into one single 12 hours block because we don't query the two hours blocks at any point. Yeah, I mean, the two hour blocks, the first compaction of two to two is like the deduplication one, right? Like that's the main goal there, I guess. Um, but to reduce but after, the three. That's, I mean, that made some sense in the past, but now we have the split and merge compactor, which again splits and deduplicates and merges everything. So I think we could take advantage of doing just one, one pass. Yeah, my, uh, we we uh, we have we use a an internal S3 endpoint, and they're really worried about the the compaction, the number of like read write amplification from compaction, and uh, they're asking if there was any ideas that we had to like reduce that. And that was the first one that came to my mind was cut out one middleman thing there. Um, yeah, that I maybe I'll I'll check that out, see how that works. It's interesting. We haven't like. For us, the compactors are the cheapest thing, I think, in the in the chain. So we have never focused really on on improving the TCO or anything. Like if it doesn't crash, we are happy because it's cheap. <laughs> that's that's to... interesting because oh, I mean we have like um, fairly strict uh, bandwidth limits from our S three provider internal S three provider, and um, we see a lot of the bandwidth comes from the compaction because you know while we're writing a, a ton of data, um, you know, a lot of it's not really queried very often. Um, or like, I would say like some, some tenants are pretty high queriers and a lot of, but most of the data is written and then never read again. Um, so it was like, and a lot of it comes from just that 12 hour, that initial 12 hours, right? So that, that helps a lot as well. Um, but yeah, maybe that's something that we should, try to get down to more like of a science rather than a guess and try to see if we can reduce the 
I would think that as a feature that we could make compactors download the blocks from the ingesters instead of going to to the object storage. But it's not our goal really, because what we want to do is to get rid of the blocks that are in the ingesters and make that short and smaller. So that's going opposite direction. For us, I we usually see the object storage like a fast something somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, fast and cheap and um, interesting, highly available, right? Yeah, like we, we, I think we've seen better performance in object storage calls than in local disks attached to the store gateways, etc. Sometimes we just go to the object storage instead of caching on the local disk. Interesting. But I, I would definitely try and see what, what happens. Like nothing bad will happen. I, as I understand the compactor just goes and makes the plan and the plan says, I have this range. Do I have blocks that fall in this range? Yes, I do. Then it compacts those blocks. Right. Yeah, the one thing I was wondering about if we would end up with, you know, blocks that are too large, but, but that doesn't happen because your last page is the same 24 hours. So if you don't get two large blocks now, then you won't get them uh, later either. So yeah, I, I agree with the like, It should be uh, safe to do uh, test it. Awesome, thank you. And then come and tell us your experience. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, uh, any other question or something we can help with? Um, if not, uh, then let's uh, close the meeting and uh, we'll work on a longer agenda next time. All right, uh, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>